as, as an activity. How do I translate the deadness of my world into a livingness of social sacrifice for each other? <coughs> I had an experience one time in a shopping center. I went in to buy something and I was, uh, I had my, when I was waiting in line and there was a senior, an older woman with a little shopping cart, very shaky, and she pushed her shopping cart up to the check stand and I was there behind her. And with shaking hands, she picked up a box of spaghetti and went to put it on the little conveyor belt and it slipped out of her hands. She didn't see it. She put it on the edge of the conveyor belt and then turned back into the cart. The spaghetti slipped, the box of spaghetti slipped off the conveyor. The checker, without even looking, it hit her in the hip and slid down her leg and she moved her foot and flipped the box of spaghetti under the counter and rang it up and then reached for the next thing in the car. I was, I was in another place emotionally. It's like, how could, how could you do that? For, you know, a dollar and a half box of spaghetti, she's going to rip this woman off. I was ready to go kind of in a very funny place. I was filled with this righteousness of the way in which I saw this happen. And then she, the checker, smiled at this old lady with this beautiful smile. And I was having very bad thoughts. And she reached down and picked the spaghetti up and put the spaghetti in the lady's cart. And suddenly, all of the anger and will of, I'm going to get to the bottom of this, turned into, what are you projecting on these people? <laughs> it was an interesting will event. And something in me snapped. And I looked at the box of spaghetti, and all I could think of was the people who made the printing who worked in the printing factory to make the box. And then I thought of the people that grew the wheat. And then I thought of the truckers that brought the box there and the person that put it on the shelf. And, 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 and suddenly the box of spaghetti was filled with social goodness, with social will, with I'm serving, even though it's my job, I'm showing up every day, and here's your box of spaghetti. And I walked out into the parking lot, and it was a hot Southern California crazy day, and the, park, and the parking lot was, it was uh, asphalt with stones embedded in it. And the irony is, on the way in, I looked at those stones and I thought, here we are in our egotism, putting these stones in this tar forever, and driving our cars over them. We're, humans are so egotistical. But then I had this event of the spaghetti, mm. and suddenly I walked out in the parking lot, and the sun was shining, and I realized that all of the stones had somehow been arranged through the way they made the parking lot, that they were all reflecting the sun. And suddenly, the sun was part of the equation <laughs> of the serving. And then the stones were okay to be there, but were hoping that I would change my consciousness to be grateful for their sacrifice. Social will through imaginative cognition. Your heart sees the reality of the will nature, but you can't do it with words. It falls. You have to go to the place of the logos, 
where the genius of the language is still living. Mm. And Ralph Steiner characterized that as living thought. Last night I read a quote where he said, living in your dreams, your thought is still living. <laughs> so if you take images from the world and you try to order them in a sequence, A, B, C, this happens, then this happens, then this happens. And you use that as a research door into the spirit. Last night I said it opens in two directions. You have to put things through the door in order for them to come back out of the kitchen. If you don't put anything into your dreams, nothing comes to you out of them that you can use. There's no, as an alchemist would say, there's no do, D-E-W. You have to gather the do of the dream, but I only can gather it if I consciously go into sleep in a sacred way. Rudolf Steiner calls that methodology rookshell. I think my day backwards of significant moments where my sense activity, I began to be awake in it rather than asleep in it. As I become awake in my sense activity during the day, when I go in the evening backwards, pictures arise in me and I'm actually ordering my life body to be much more present for me consciously when I have a sensation. I'm transforming the reactive part of my consciousness into a proactive part of my consciousness. I'm changing, actually, my brain. I'm changing my neurology by doing the daily review. I'm creating myself a potential to awaken in the dream state. This is building the hut, knowledge, or uh, building the hut, transformation of dream life, continuity of consciousness, and knowledge of the higher worlds. If you want page up first. So, I build the hut by finding something in the world that reminds me of an issue that I have. And now we're getting to the realm of symbol and the deeper aspect of the work of Christian Rosenkreuz. I have to make of things in the world symbols of my mission. Symbols of the part of me that will be present at the end of this round. And those come to me in the world through the actions of other people. They're, they're always telling me about the things I need to pay attention to. And if I can find a good symbol might be Jupiter that seems to speak to me, or Saturn, or goodness knows, salt. Salt is a great symbol. If I can think it in pictures, how do I think in pictures? Put some salt in water and watch it dissolve and then evaporate the water and watch it come back again. That's a little movie that's provided for you to understand your own thinking. In alchemy, it's called salt. The salt process is a symbol of thinking. And yet, there it is in the shaker, and we use it and move on down the road. 
but I can transform it into a symbol. If I wish to get stronger thinking, dissolve some salt. Have some salt, A. Put it in water and dissolve it, B. Evaporate the water and watch the salt come back, C. It's better than YouTube. It's like personal YouTube. Imagine you put it on YouTube, salt dissolving, salt coming up, and people go, what the heck is that? <laughs> but if I'm doing it, I'm investing in that commonplace sensory activity a great deal of interest and will. I'm, I'm resurrecting its corpse through my enthusiasm for its becoming. So I take my salt, I make the little movie, I take it into sleep. And what that does is it primes my organism for when I come back from my adventure and I try to incarnate into my body again, my life body, and my soul have been harmonized. And when I form the picture and let it go, that feeling of letting a picture go promotes something in the soul, Rudolf Steiner calls wonder. Wonder is, I wonder, I wonder. Hmm. And if you wonder enough, the world becomes wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> if you allow yourself to just take the most commonplace thing and invest it with the enthusiasm of a four-year-old. That's wonder. And what it does is it, it shakes you away from it. It's just salt. It's just salt, like, get a life, Dennis. It's a salt shaker. <laughs> but, you know, G Goethe's famous question is, why is the sky blue? It's like, Goethe, hello, it's blue. <laughs> Except at night. Yeah, but he asked questions like that. And we need to ask questions like that, because Goethe was a Rosicrucian. When I take things from the world and I ask, how did it get there? How did the wall get there? How did the salt get there? Where did it come from? How does it come into being? How does it go away? But I form them as a series of pictures and I take that into sleep. In the morning, there's a condition called REM sleep, R-E-M, rapid eye movement. In rapid eye movement sleep, you have all the faculties you have in your awake state except one. And that is the inhibiting element of logic. So you are fully equipped except for your logic board. And the reason why you don't have logic is because REM sleep has 10 times more potential for creating new neurons than any other state of consciousness. Meaning, in REM sleep, you are being given this tremendous gift from the hierarchies to have what in the ancient world was called metanoia, change your thinking. That is the living thought that Rudolf Steiner described in the dream state. If you practice the daily review, and then you add an imagination of an ABC of a symbolic sequence that seems to remind you of issues in your life, and you give that into sleep regularly, 
you will start to awaken in the REM dream with the consciousness that this is a dream and I am in it and something is being given to me that is significant. But you may not know what it is, but that teaches you to tolerate living in a question in, in a question that has no answer. If you do that again and again and again and again and again, your heart will begin to open in a different way to your daily life. You will start to have a feeling that somehow your daily life is participating in the unfolding of a biography that is yours, but is much bigger than your life. Rudolf Steiner calls that your mission. Your mission is why you decided to incarnate when you and your angel and the guardian of the threshold worked out your life at your last uh, time of passing, at your last death. You are shown your mission and then you decide whether this life was in line with that mission or not in the places where it was not in line with the mission you are asked, well, what would you like to do to bring it more in line? And you have an excellent idea of how to do that. And that gets written in the book by your angel, and that's called karma. Nobody makes you do it. You do it out of your heart. You do it out of an imaginative perception of you as a transcendent being for all time, which is not very logical. The logic only applies to the relationships of the sense world. Imagination takes logic and says, thank you for making the container but now I'm going to fill it with the divine. Logic just makes the vessel. But imagination fills it with creativity. Logic makes innovation. Imagination and creativity makes social will. So my heart listens to my REM sleep and during the day becomes awake to significant time and space relationships where I hear people speaking to each other and they are speaking out of their own relationship, but I am hearing an echo of resonance to my experience in the dream. That's when imagination moves into inspiration. I begin to, in my daily life, experience that a part of me is living a biography here on Earth, simultaneous to a biography that is in the spiritual world. and the two are connected. But I have to get rid of logic in order to feel the connection. 